Welcome back. In this video, we are going to apply what we have learned in the last presentation, which means we're going to use if statements in order to check the user input and compare it with the random number. Okay, so in the last video, we saw how we can see that a number is actually a number. Well, we converted it into a number. We didn't get any problems. But for now, let's actually use this answer number to compare it with our random number. So therefore, I'm going to get rid of these debug logs because we're not using them for now. What I want to do instead is I want to check for the answer that the user has entered. So answer and I want to compare it to a random number that we have defined. So to our variable random num. Let's also add those curly brackets because that's the general structure of an if statement. So you see you have this if keyword, then you have the opening brackets, then the comparison that you want to do or the variable that you're checking. It could also just be a Boolean. And then in curly brackets, you have the code that should be executed if this condition here is met. In our case, we're comparing answer to random number. So how does that work? And why do we have two equal signs here? Well, what two equal signs do is they compare what is left to the two equal signs with what is right to the equal signs, and they will return a bool. So if you hover over here, you can see it says bool int dot operator equal equal int left int right. So that will be the internal operation that will be run, and they will compare the content of the two variables because the two variables are not the equal thing or the same thing. They are really just comparing the content. So what is inside of those variables? Are they the same values? So that is what we're doing here. Comparing the answer that the user has entered into the user input with the random num, which means this random number. So let's use a debug log for now. And let's just say correct. Okay, so if that's the case, if the answer and the random number are the same, then we can just block something like correct. Otherwise, for now, let's use this else block that will say debug log incorrect. Okay, and end with a semicolon. Okay, so this will be a very simple example where we just have two options. So either we are correct or we are incorrect. We're going to see later on how we can compare if the number is greater than or lower than the random number, and then we can do something accordingly. So let's save the script. Let's go back to Unity. And in Unity, let's run our game. And because we know what our random number is, so we have defined it here, it's 10. So if we enter five here, we will know that it's incorrect. So you can see here, our debug log says incorrect because I pressed this guess button, which then runs our code. So now let me enter 10 and guess, and you will see it says correct, because this time we have the exact same number as the random number for our input number. Now, just a little thing not to confuse you, you can play around with your random number here, because that's what, how we designed our game. We made this random num public but that is not necessarily something that you want to have. I mean, for debugging, it's fine because we can now check it if it actually works, but we don't want our random number to actually be public and adjustable from here, even though now for testing purposes, it's fine. So let's test it. Let's enter 15 now and let's guess with 10. And you can see it says incorrect because now we overrode the number that was 10, this random num with 15. And now 10 is of course not equal to 15. So let's go back to our code because now we can see the answer is what we entered and the random number is what we have defined up here at the beginning, but then overwrote inside of Unity at this point here. Okay, so let's stop the execution of the game because whenever we want to make changes to our code, it's always good if our game is not running, otherwise Unity might complain. So you can see that you have the two cases and you can basically run code accordingly. In this case, the code that we're running is really just a debug log. And later on, we will see how we can actually change the text that we display here. So this new text, so that it will display either, hey, you were correct or something like, please enter a higher or a lower number. 
Okay, so now let's adjust this code here so that it doesn't just have two cases, but it has three cases. Because the three cases are that we are either correct with the value that we entered, or we are higher than the value that the computer thought of, or we are lower than the value that the computer thought of. So let's add the other cases. So here we can use something called else if, as we saw in the presentation. So this else if allows us to add another condition that will be very specific. So here we can compare, is the answer going to be greater than the random number? And if that's the case, we want to display something else. We could say something like try lower. So debug log try lower. And then in the other cases, so in the else block, we can say try higher. So here, why are we saying try higher? And why are we sure that we need to go higher in that else block? Because that's the default block, so to speak. So the default case. Well, that is because we have covered all of the other cases already. And in this particular example, we only have three cases. So the answer is e either equal or it's greater or it's lower. If it's greater than, we need to say, hey, please try a lower number. If it's less than, so if our answer is lower than the random number, then we need to tell the user to try higher. Now, of course, you could have said else if answer less than random number. That would have been fine as well, but it's just common practice to use the else block because it's just more efficient this way. It's not going to have to specifically check once again at this point, but it will just know, okay, if this is not the case, and if that is not the case, then this will always be the case. So let's just do it. Otherwise, if we add this else if, our compiler will also have to check this once again. So it will not be certain, but it will actually have to, let's say, use their computation capacity in order to double check this. It's just not as efficient from a programming perspective. So at this point, let's save our script and let's go back to Unity. And let's run our game. So here, let me enter five and it will say try higher. Okay, then let me try eight. Okay, still higher. All right, in that case, let's try 11. Try lower. Okay, let's try nine. Try higher. Okay, then let's try 10. And there we are, we are correct. So in our case, we knew it was 10, but it was still good to just test it and see how our game is going to respond to our input. And in general, whenever you are building such a game, always make sure that you're covering all of the different cases because you don't want to have the situation where you forgot one case and your user uses this case or your player uses that case and then the game just doesn't work anymore because he cannot get to the next point. All of us probably have come across this problem before or maybe not all of us, but some of us have come across the problem where we are playing a game and we are running a quest or doing a quest in the game and at one point the game just doesn't work anymore the quest just doesn't work anymore because for some reason the npc just disappeared or maybe we killed the npc before in open world rpgs the most common example right now would probably be cyberpunk because there were quite some situations where there were game breaking bugs basically you wouldn't be able to finish the game if you didn't play the game in a certain way and they didn't anticipate certain scenarios in which well a quest wouldn't be finishable so if you kill somebody you would need for a certain quest then a certain element in the game wouldn't be triggered and well basically you couldn't complete the quest so you would have to load a game state a lot earlier where you for example didn't kill that person in the game okay so all of these things are something that you might want to consider and think about when building your games. So always have this else case, which will just cover all of the other options. All right, so that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to see how we can actually print something onto the screen. And well, we're also going to look at methods later on as well. So see you in the next video.